Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It looks like I am able to record, so I'm going to record this today. And since this is our first meeting, I thought I'd keep it a little informal. Hopefully we can do some brainstorming about what we would like out of the cataloging interest group and what we'd like the to do in the group, what we'd like the group to do for us, for others. And then uh, one thing that I thought we could do for each other is a Q&A about cataloging and anything related to cataloging and COHA. So hopefully at the, towards the end, we'll have some time for that. And uh, one thing I thought we could do as a group, of course, is advocate for bugs, developments that interest us, and uh, perhaps point out bugs to each other that might be interesting to comment on work on that sort of thing. Does anybody else have any ideas? I have a comment in the chat from Micah. Sounds great. Good. And a plus one from Carolyn, great. I'm gonna be reading the chat out loud to get it into the recording since sometimes with these recordings, the chat isn't captured. So we'll see how that goes. I also thought that I'd take some notes and circulate them to our Google group so that people who don't have the time to watch the whole recording or perhaps the technology can get up to date and keep abreast of what's going on that way. So there is a bug that I was interested in. It's a tiny bug, but and it's the first one that I put into Bugzilla. I'll put the link in the chat. It's bug number 23119. It has to do with display order of added titles in the 246 or the 730. And I thought I'd point out here too that if anyone has any questions at any time about anything we're talking about, like if we're throwing around mark tags and people would like us to do some defining, throw up your hand, throw something in the chat. We're happy to do that. Todd mentions in the chat, looks like this bug needs some love and comments and votes. I agree. Okay, folks can't see the link not showing up in the chat. Oh, maybe I didn't send it to everybody. Sorry about that. Ah, thank you, Liz. Coming up on February 14th is a bug squashing day and commenting on bugs is something that we could do. 
It's very easy to sign up for an account in the Bugzilla and add your comments. We have some more in the chat. I know a bit of work has been done on RDF and COHA. Do we want to advocate a more significant shift? That sounds great. Another comment, our library just went live with COHA last October, so I'm pretty new to the COHA family. Welcome, Yu Yan. So far, when we have issues or problems, we create tickets and COHA ticketing system. The COHA support has been great. However, sometimes I do want to figure things out by going to COHA community before burdening the COHA support team. Can anyone recommend where's the best place to go to see other user solutions to their problems and issues? Oh, the COHA list, the general COHA email list is great. There's a bunch of really helpful, knowledgeable people on that list. So I rely on that a lot. Also, I'm hoping our cataloging group too will be a place we can chat about that. So please feel free to join our uh, cataloging Google group. Oh, and Caroline points out, LC is now cataloging exclusively in Bibframe. Yes, I'm hoping that we can do a lot to help each other with the transition from Mark to Bibframe that's coming in the future. And Jason is sharing another bug with us, number 10787, linked data omnibus. That looks really interesting. An omnibus for adding support for linked data and RDF to Koha. I'm going to add myself to the CC list for that. And please feel free to unmute yourself and chime in, anyone. So it's Jason. Um, do you think it might be helpful to, for the newer people to actually show them? Um, what you're doing in Bugzilla, show them how to copy themselves on a bug or make a comment. Um, oh, absolutely. That's a great idea. Let me find a bug that I can add myself to. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. So I hope people are seeing the Bugzilla homepage. Yeah, I can see it. Great. I've logged in. And I'm going to look for something about macros. Let's see. Actually, I think I'm already on these. Let me look for something in general with Rancor, the advanced editor. Oh, better ways to manage MARC frameworks. That sounds like something I'm definitely interested in. 
So when I found that when I'm logged in and I look at a bug, the, let me move this over here, the add me to the CC list is automatically checked, which is great. So if I want to be added to the CC list on this bug so that I'll get an email whenever there's an update to the bug, all I have to do at this point is click save changes. And if I decide that I don't want to be CC'd, it's something I'm not actually interested in, all one needs to do is uncheck that and hit changes. It's that easy. And then to comment on a bug, it's as easy as putting your comments in the box and hitting save changes. Oh, great. A suggestion from Todd. Great suggestion. Since my screen share is up, show the group how to place their vote for a bug. Absolutely. I'll share my screen again. Looking around, it's been a while since I voted on a bug. Here we go. There's a little vote right here. And I'm going to vote one. I usually just give it a 10 and max my votes. <laughs> well, I have to admit right now I haven't read through the bug. I'm assuming I can change it later. Yeah, you can always come back and change your vote. Great. So tell me, it's been a while since I've done this. Do I have to hit save or anything? Change my votes. All right, change my votes. Excellent. Voting is another thing we can do on Global Bug Squash Day. It really gives the developers an idea of what they should focus on. Terrific. We have another note in the chat. Yuyan saying that, uh, thinking perhaps just send her notes to the group or his notes to the group. Yes, do. Ah, and asking for the group that I mentioned, how to join, and the website for bugs. I'll put those links in the chat. I'm putting into the chat the Bugzilla link, which is bugs.coha-community.org slash bugzilla3 slash. And our Google group for our cataloging SIG can be found at a link that I've put following that one. And let's find the link for the main Koha discussion list.
And then my email address, I'll also put in the chat to everyone. It's Heather underscore Hernandez at nps.gov. And if anyone needs any help with the Google group in joining for our cataloging interest group, they can email info at coha-us.org. And I'll put that in the chat as well. And I'll just do a little plug for Koha US on here. Um, we also have um, our Learn From page broken down by modules. So there is a cataloging um, link there that goes out to some resources that we've already curated on cataloging. Um, mostly it's videos that Bywater's made and we've just kind of organized them onto uh, this page specifically. Um, so you can look through that. If there are things you guys want to add feel free to send them to us and we, we can put them up. There's also a link to the manual, um, the community manual for cataloging there. So there are a few resources there, but we're always looking for more um, things to share there. That's great, Jason. I noticed that the link on the um, the learn page for getting involved goes to the main Koha community page for getting involved. Um, I was thinking that I could use things that are much more simple. Like when I click the from that page to the bug reporting guidelines. It's very, very thorough, but it's very, very long. And I was thinking about perhaps just some shorter step-by-steps. Perhaps that's something we could put on the Koha US page, you know, to be in between Koha US page. Here's a walkthrough. Here's more information on the Koha community page. Yeah, I think that's that's something that's been on our list is to kind of um, help people walk through the process and help people uh, get ideas on how they can get involved without deep diving right away. So, Terrific. Um, our, our collaborate page has been updated to sort through that. I'll link that to them. This is just an advertisement for me at this point, huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so our collaborate page kind of talks about ways you can get involved with Koha US. Um, and it also does have links out to the global community as well. So if you want to join the mailing list, which Heather posted earlier. Um, but there, there's still that sort of intermediate step of just basics um, that I think there's a gap there that we could definitely work on filling in. Great. Oh, in the chat, Carolyn points out the community docs team needs writers if anyone is interested. I never use Rancor, so I'm uncomfortable writing about it. That is something I would love to be more involved in. I've been playing with MarkEdit with trying to configure MarkEdit to work with OCLC as well as Koha. And I've been trying to take some extensive notes because I noticed that do the documentation isn't up to date for the latest versions of the software. And that was something that I was hoping to get into a form that could be shared. So I'm going to work on that one probably first. Oh, 
Oh, great. And Carolyn shared the link at wikicoha-community.org slash wiki slash editing underscore the underscore coha underscore manual for the how-to. Fantastic. Thank you. And I know we're not all OCLC users. Uh, perhaps there are some Sky River users. Perhaps there are other users who don't use bibliographic utilities. But I'm hoping that something that we can help each other with and work on are the interfaces that catalogers use to get their records into or out of Koha. And I've noticed a lack of documentation for that sort of interface like working with OCLC, perhaps working with Sky River, or different sources for Z3950. So hopefully we can be resources for each other and improve documentation and how-tos in those areas too. And in the chat we have a plus plus cool. Great, great. I know there's a page on the, you were talking about Z3950 targets. I know there's a page on the wiki. Um, I haven't found it yet, but I'll put a link in once I do. Great. Where people have shared out their Z3950 information. And I think that's another way that um, people in this group could help. If, you're, if you want to share your um, info so that we can get records from each other um, and you're not comfortable adding it to the wiki, you can send it to one of us and we can post that up for you. Um, see if I can find it. I'll look for our settings. We're a specialized maritime history library, so I don't know how many people would be interested in our records, but we're always happy to share them. Holly asked the question, can I check, let's see, the policy for working in the Taigya group for updating the manual. Is it all right to just claim unclaimed work to mark that you will be making those changes in the manual? Perhaps Caroline can answer that or anyone. Ah, and Caroline answers, yep, assign stuff to yourself. That's great. Oh, wonderful. And Jason posts the link to where the Z3950 targets are at wiki.coha-community.org slash wiki slash coha underscore open underscore Z39.50 underscore sources. I'll make sure that ours are there. Yes. Ours are keys at the Research Center of SF Maritime NHP. Oh, wonderful. And Caroline shares the docs to do list at 
tree dot taiga t a i g a dot i o slash project slash l d j a m i s o n hyphen koha docs hyphen one eight o five slash epics. She mentions that she adds the release notes as the bugs are pushed so they can be documented. Great. So I'm also wondering if people would like to share what they'd like to see in these in-person meetings. We could focus on a particular topic for the first half. We could, I could do actual agendas with information sharing. So feel free to put ideas for that in the chat, in the chat or send to our Google group or email to me. We could keep them informal. We can have them more structured. I think whatever works for us. I think these forums would be really great for the opportunity to screen share and do some video walkthroughs. Elaine shares in the chat an idea to be good to have specific topics on occasion. I like that idea too, especially since we've got a full hour every month. We can always have a specific topic for our first half. People can tune in for that if they're interested or not and have more free form Q&A comments discussions on the second half. So I, one topic I'd like to see is, is Rancor, because um, we don't use it too much. We just use the basic editor, but maybe like a walkthrough or something on, on using it and how it works would be good. That, that sounds great. And I would be more than happy to work on that and to do a walkthrough and something live in our catalog. I'm the only cataloger for the library materials, so I can, I can go into our catalog. I can create any kind of record I want at any time. So yeah, we, that's a great idea. You don't get yelled at for making dummy records. <laughs> no one's going to yell at me, even if they find them. <laughs> <laughs> and we have another comment. We have 11 official, 11 official languages in the territory. Tips and tricks from other COHA partners on display and cataloging would be appreciated. Yes, that is a great idea. Even though our group is sponsored by and assisted by COHA US, which is targeted to North America, in North America, uh, we have three official languages, English, French, Spanish, and also, we have so many frequently used languages. Um, in my catalog, we have a lot of Japanese records. We have some Cyrillic records. And we have a lot of public libraries in North America that are serving populations speaking a lot of non-Roman languages, especially. And Elaine chimes in Irish and Scottish Gaelic, yes. I know a lot of Welsh learners too. So I'll add that to our list of potential topics, languages and displays.
I've also been working on and playing with authority linking, and I know Micah has been, uh, we've been talking about that. Micah has been doing a lot of really great work on that. So I think that would be a pretty good topic for us too. And I'd like to see our group help each other also with authorities and authority issues. We're also going to be coming up soon on Elasticsearch and searching for and retrieving the cataloging records, I think is a topic very, very near and dear to catalogers. Micah writes in the chat, she's exploring and creating records for archival collections. She'd be interested in hearing from others who are more familiar with EAD and using Koha to create discoverable records for archival collections. Yes. We have records in our Koha catalog for our archival collections that link to the full finding aids at the Online Archive of California. And one thing that I've been interested in exploring with Mark Edit probably are extracting the EAD from the Online Archive of California or via Archive Grid and doing conversions from the EAD format to Mark 21 to facilitate getting the records in a more automated way yet a high quality way into our COHA catalog. So I'll definitely add that as our list of topics for the future. So Heather, <clears throat> this is Micah. Um, also on that topic, so we don't have any finding aids at all. We're starting from scratch. So um, I have been wondering the, about the value of even creating a finding aid, or is there a way that we can use COHA to then house all of the information that would be in a, in a finding aid? And from what I understand, the reason why that hasn't been done previously is because Mark tends to, it has a limit on how big the record can be. Uh, but I was talking with one of the developers at Bywater, and he said that Koha does not have that limit. That, you know, if we ever wanted to export the record and it's too large, we might have trouble. But as long as it's being housed in Koha, we could make it as big as we want and have dozens of subject headings and name headings and all of that stuff. So I'm kind of, I'm, you know, so I'm, I, I want to hear the pros and cons about doing it that way versus having a finding aid, things like that. That sounds great. I would love for us to explore those issues. And that's my understanding too, that COHA doesn't have these limits. And so you can have as many access points as you want or need. The Mark 21 format is very flexible. There's a room in it for everything that you would put into a traditional finding aid. And with the ability now to attach images and PDFs to the record, you can have to the bib record in Koha, you can have those online items or a PDF version of the entire finding aid record if someone wanted that to print out and have as well attached to your bibliographic record. So it's my understanding that that all can be represented in Koha in one place. Elaine puts in the chat, she's also interested in the archival applications and she has some experience in this. Great, Elaine. One thing that would be great for us to do too is we can do, we can shift the group leader role for the online meetings. If someone's interested in hosting a session on a particular topic to share their expertise, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I've also been doing bibliographic records for finding aids for a long time, but I don't have the experience with the crosswalk of the EAD to mark. I've been doing it manually. Mm -hmm. 
I think there's also some interest out in the COHO community for records for archival formats at the item level. And we've got records in our catalog for photographs, individual photographs, and one test record for a painting. So that might be a topic for the future too, for exploring is the um, archival formats, museum objects, and that sort of thing. I also wonder if there'd be interest in uh, having meeting topics on cataloging non-book formats, especially serials, since serials get a little weird. We could work on that. Audiovisual formats. And we have some more things in the chat here. Yuyan saying when a bib record from OCLC is imported to COHA, sometimes the 246 field title has a blank box to work on, and sometimes it doesn't after the field and tries to add it, but seems there's no way to do it. I have no idea why imported bib field 246 cannot be edited and another can and another cannot. And Caroline says, yes, <laughs> and Liz says, yes, please. <laughs> And Todd asks if that was a boat horn. <laughs> this says perhaps a framework issue. Um, for the 246 issue, I would, I would really encourage a support ticket for that because that would require the expertise to, yes, look at your frameworks and how the record's being imported. There could also be some import settings, I would think, affecting that. I don't think there's anything going on at the OCLC level that I'd be aware of. That might be something also to post to the general COHA list to get more input on it and more OCLC users in case your COHA support ticket staff isn't familiar with OCLC. You can get people who are more familiar with that. Also, if there's anything I can do on my end to test import export in different ways with ROCLC settings, do let me know. Um, that wasn't a boat horn. It's, uh, it's garbage day today. So we have the garbage trucks going around and the streets here are pretty small. So there's often a lot of honking and truck horns at this hour. Yeah, I'm actually telecommuting from Berkeley, although I work in a maritime library, which is right on the water in San Francisco on the northern waterfront. So at work, we do hear boat horns, ship horns, fog horns, a um, little bit inland today, working from home. Another topic I was wondering if people would be interested in seeing in a future meeting is talking about cataloging documentation and rules, uh, RDA, AACR2, um, whether or not you have access to this documentation or not, a catalogers desktop from the Library of Congress. A lot of this documentation is really expensive to subscribe to. A lot of places can't afford it. And a lot of catalogers still want to create as standard and shareable as a record as possible. So I was hoping we could just be a resource for each other about a lot of those little questions that come up. And also a lot of solutions we found for our users where that sort of documentation just doesn't really work and we're doing something a little bit non-standard how to code it in the mark record so that it shows as this is a local non-standard thing take it or leave it if the record's shared that might be a way we could be a resource for each other And just to piggyback on that, I think mm -hmm. if you're doing weird things because Koha doesn't let you 
doesn't work how you want it to. I think we should talk about that kind of stuff. Like for a long time, we were um, using the wrong indicator on series because we didn't like how the series displayed. So um, weird workarounds are a good thing to talk about and try and get ironed out so that it's um, fixed across the board for everybody, um, I think. Yes, that is an excellent point. Because that would help us in write up a good bug or a good development to see how to solve this problem that could be a solution for others as well. Yeah, definitely. One thing I was interested in exploring was the new ways that MARC templates could be used for sort of global updating records. And I haven't played with that and I wanna play with that. So that's an area that I'd like to explore and bring to the group and get some ideas and tips and tricks. I, I agree. I think it'd be nice to be able to um, share out some of those templates that other people are using, um, like common things that we're doing with those. So that's a good one for sure. Great. Good. I'd also like to see us share and get onto the main Coho Wiki reports that work really well for us. and. Uh, help each other share those reports so that those can be shared with other people as well as sharing them through the new MANA capability and help each other get MANA working. So let's see, looks like we have about 15 more minutes allocated in our meeting room. I've taken some notes and I will write up those notes and share them with our cataloging Google group. And also I'll share whenever we have a special topic coming up for a meeting, I'll be sure to share that to the cataloging group, but also the COHA US group and the main COHA list in case it attracts some interest from other people. That sounds like a great idea to me. Um, we do definitely want to try and keep these as open as possible. So um, yeah, hitting all the lists is good because We'll get more input as well as it won't seem like we're trying to hide in the, in the corner and do our own thing. <laughs> we don't want it to seem like that. So. Exactly. Well, and I think it'll also raise awareness of COHA US and perhaps attract some members because one doesn't need to be in the US to join COHA US. Right. And membership, I mean, you don't have to be a member to be here today. Um, Membership is more of an organizational thing where you get to vote on things. So you get to vote on developments that we're paying for. You get to vote on where our conference is. Um, but we, we're trying to keep as much open as possible just so that anyone can access the resources we're, we're curating, um, these groups included. So That's terrific. That's absolutely terrific. Very 
much in the spirit of Koha and the community. Well, and although I think, of course, since we're sponsored by Koha US and uh, a lot of us are here in the US, we're going to be working primarily with Mark 21, but there's no reason we need to be working exclusively with Mark 21 because uh, it's a global world and a global data format. So if we can help people with other MARC formats, non-MARC, then I think that would be a great thing for us to work on and help people with too. Yeah, we, um, I don't have any experience with that, but Heather can help you. <laughs> you know, and we can, we can work together to find solutions, I'm sure, so. Definitely. Well, I think I'll give everyone a few more minutes to see if there are any last minute ideas. Anything else anybody would like to chime in on? Um, I'll just add, I guess, uh, since we're wrapping up here, um, if you're if you want to save the chat, this is something that I didn't know for a long time. If you go down to the uh, bottom right where you type, there's an ellipsis there. It's kind of ah. hard to see, um, and you can save the chat, and it'll put it into a, a notepad. So if you want to um, save all those links and stuff they got put over there, ah. um, that's an easy way to do it. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jason. We have some thanks and goodbyes in the chat. Yes, thank you everyone. I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up and let people have a little bit more of their day. Thank you all so much for joining us. It's great to see you all here and I'm looking forward to seeing you at our next meeting or online and out in the community. And thanks to Coho US for the help and support for getting this going. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Heather. Thank you.